The COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted the need Americans have for reliable high-speed internet access and the importance of having reliable broadband infrastructure. So from online learning to telemedicine, the pandemic has proven that broadband is a necessary utility. So to examine and address some of the challenges counties are facing when it comes to bridging the digital divide, NICO has launched the Broadband Task Force, and we are joined by task force co-chairs, Montgomery County, Maryland Council Member Craig Rice and Weiss County, Texas Judge J.D. Clark. Thank you both for joining us. So to start us off, NICO President Gary Moore announced the formation of the task force in October of last year. So Judge Clark, what has the group been focused on these past five months? Well, it's been a great first five months so far for this task force. We've, of course, started out by putting together a, a group of really diverse county officials, getting to know each other and kind of what everyone's broadband situation is and the issues we face in our very different communities. We've put together a really great advisory council to work alongside with us and be a valuable resource. And then we have organized into subcommittees to focus on different content areas and different specific issues. And we'll touch on that in, in a little bit, but uh, with some specific goals and, and tasks ahead of them. And then we've started talking as well as, as, as we've had these conversations, what do we want this end product to look like? And where do we want it to go from here? We don't want this to be a uh, one and done task force and that's the last you hear of the work. And so we've talked about how we can make sure that it's an ongoing project and, and really a valuable tool for county leaders. Sure, and there have been many examples of broadband disparities throughout the last year. Council Member Rice, what do you think has been the biggest broadband challenge for counties? Well, I think it's coupled into two different uh, sorts of uh, buckets here. One is that um, it's not a one size fits all solution uh, because there are so many different challenges that affect our counties all across this nation uh, from urban to rural to those in between. And some of them deal with connectivity, some of them deal with affordability, some of them deal with all. And so it's really hard to try and come up with recommendations that will work for everyone. Uh, but I think one of the other broad, biggest broadband challenges is the reality that we don't have that access uh, and so many stumbling blocks stand in the way, uh, whether it's a uh, private sector that still has a significant amount of decision making power and control over whether or not broadband goes into certain areas. It also is from an affordability standpoint because it is an expensive uh, technology that's out there. And then you also have the challenges just associated with laws that are already in place that limit and mitigate uh, the ability for local jurisdictions to do what they need to, to step up and answer the call of what we're hearing for our communities. We know what's at stake. We all know what needs to happen, but the hardest part about it is really trying to craft a way in which we can get to that uh, finish line. And so I think that that's why this broadband task force is just so important because it's really gonna help us to get there. Mm -hmm. And Judge Clark, you had mentioned the four subcommittees the task force recently formed to address specific areas related to bridging the digital divide. Can you tell us a little bit more about these subcommittees and how you anticipate committee members' work will help the task force achieve its goals? Absolutely. We, we do have four subcommittees and members with different backgrounds and experiences are divided up amongst those subcommittees to help create a really well-rounded conversation and, and really drive this task force forward. And they're concentrated around four different areas. So we've got preparing for broadband, and that could be things like, how does a, how does a county maybe do a broadband infrastructure study? What are things that need to be done to lay the groundwork for broadband investment and expansion? Then we've got a subcommittee looking at barriers to build out. And that could be, depending on the location and the situation, that could be regulatory barriers, geographic barriers, financial barriers, having those conversations. Then there's a subcommittee looking at the digital divide. And typically, uh, in, when we've talked about the digital divide, it tends to center around rural communities. And it is a massive rural issue and continues to be a massive rural issue, but it's not solely a rural issue. And as Councilmember Ross touched on, you find digital divides in suburban, suburban areas and urban areas for different reasons and different types of divides. And we've got a really diverse group talking about that and how that looks in different communities. 
And then the fourth subcommittee is looking at how we future proof our local economies. Technology is going to continue to change. And as we try to see broadband investments, we also don't want to get left behind with changing technology and, and changing trends. And so how can we be forward thinking and future proofing our local economies to continue to be resilient, continue to be responsive and continue to be able to keep up so that we don't get left behind as technology continues to, to change. Sure, and I know we've been hearing a lot about counties finding different innovative ways to deploy Wi-Fi hotspots or create these mobile hotspot locations and areas that are lacking broadband infrastructure. Council Member Rice, I'm curious if you've heard of any other innovative solutions that you've seen from counties. Well, it's amazing just how uh, uh, innovative our counties have become uh, when it comes to trying to address this issue. Everything from working with school systems to provide hotspots to all of their students who need them. I mean, that's phenomenal and has a huge uh, financial impact, but things that we're seeing our local jurisdictions invest in. Uh, it also involves uh, buses uh, equipped with Wi-Fi and other types of uh, uh, vehicles going out into communities that are underserved and serving as those mobile hotspots. Uh, it's using our government buildings, some of which are closed, but still have Wi-Fi and making sure that people have access to the Wi-Fi so they can come to those government buildings while they may not be able to go in them because they're closed via COVID uh, can still actually utilize the Wi-Fi hotspots and utilize that. But we've also seen some things that go beyond just the hotspot uh, uh, point of it, which is um, actually working to create uh, local broadband infrastructure stood up by municipalities and local governments. Uh, something in which requires huge investment, uh, but again, speaks to the commitment of what local jurisdictions are doing. When you look at Wayne County uh, and you know, representing Detroit, Michigan and seeing what they're doing there, uh, these are the kinds of innovative things that we're seeing across this country. And last but certainly not least, it certainly is about ha helping to offset financially the cost of acquiring uh, broadband and making sure that some of our lower income residents who do have the connectivity but just can't afford to be connected can also be connected. There's just so many ways in which folks are trying to answer the call. People just need help. And like I said before, the needs are so diverse and so challenging. We've got to do all the things in the toolbox, not just pick one or two. And my final question, and this can go to Judge Clark, what are the long-term goals of this task force and what federal support do you think would help counties when it comes to bridging the digital divide? So basically where we envision this task force going is each of our subcommittees is, is tasked with setting near, medium, and long-term goals for those, for those topic areas. Our task force as a whole, we hope to roll out, we plan to roll out a final product that's really twofold. One will be a policy report with legislative and regulatory recommendations either for implementation or removal. If it's something that helps broadband investment and expansion, we really wanna tout that. If it's something that's hindering broadband expansion and investment, we wanna highlight that and push for that to change. The other piece of that will be a toolkit, uh, a word that Council Member Ross is, is using as well, is a toolkit for county officials with a compilation, a clearinghouse of resources for broadband expansion. A lot of times county officials will say, I know we need better broadband in my area, but I don't even know where to begin. And we wanna to put together a toolkit for county officials to use, to be able to look at best practices, be able to look at programs that exist out there that might help their county. And so I think that combined with legislative and regulatory pushes will really have a huge impact on the broadband landscape in all our counties. And I think um, you mentioned financial aid from, from the federal government, I think we're going to see a lot of counties get really innovative with the recovery dollars that our counties are going to be receiving. Obviously, broadband is one of the big allowable expenses within that. And I think that's a great opportunity for counties to be innovative, for counties to have public-private partnerships with willing providers and really make a difference and instead of just sitting back and waiting on somebody to come in and fix all your broadband problems, let's be proactive. Let's, let's know what we know, know what we don't know, and have resources available to grab onto and, and really make a difference when it comes to broadband in all our counties. Well, Council Member Rice, Judge Clark, these are great points. Thank you for your work with this task force. And thanks again for your time to share the work of the task force with us. We appreciate it.
Thank you, Rachel. Thank you very much.